Chapter 31 Later And a happy scene at home. Me sitting stiff in and a tall armchair in the living room. Dad hunched on the couch facing me, rubbing his chin. Mom paced back and forth, shaking her head. Her hands clasped together in front of her. Dad raised his eyes to the ceiling. I really don't believe this happened, he murmured. I turned as Rachel poked her head down from the top of the stairs. Why is Jack in trouble? She asked. Go back to bed, Mom snapped. Don't be nosy. Did Jack do something bad? Rachel demanded. Is he going to go to jail? We'll talk about it in the morning, Dad said. Jack isn't going anywhere. Go back to bed. We all watched as she disappeared. Then Dad sighed again. <sighs> Want to tell us why you did it, Jack? Mom stopped pacing. She stared hard at me, as if trying to read my mind. I had a lot of time to think about what to tell them. If I said, a voice on my phone ordered me to break into the house house, I knew what Mom and Dad would think. They think I was crazy, and they would drag me off to a bunch of doctors, and the doctors would also think I was crazy. What else can you think about a person hearing voices? So I knew I couldn't tell the truth. I had to keep on lying. Thanks to Emmy, I was becoming the biggest liar in the world. It was a dare, I said. Mom and Dad both blinked. A dare? Mom repeated. These two boys on the school bus, they dared me, I said. They, they said they'd pound me into lunch me if I didn't break into the house and take something. Mom's eyes bulged. Her face turned red. Who are these boys? Tell me their names. I'm going to call their parents right now. Uh-oh. My lies were going to get me into even bigger trouble. No, Mom, don't, I said. And I won't make it worse. They'll be in my face even more. If these boys are bullying you and getting into major trouble, we need to talk to them, Mom insisted. Dad frowned at me. Give us a name, Jack. If you're being bullied, we need to speak to the parents. No stalling. Mick Owens, I blurred out. Okay, Mom said. It's late, but I'm going to call his parents right now. She started to the phone. But as she reached to pick it up, it rang. She let out a startled cry. Hello? Her expression turned to surprise. Mrs. Owens? Mick's mother? Huh? Why was Mick's mother calling us? Mom pressed the button to put the phone in speakerphone. Now Dad and I could hear the conversation too. What a coincidence, Mom said into the phone. I was just going to call you. Oh, I see, Mrs. Owens said. So Jack told you that he stole Mick's camera? My heart skipped a beat. I let out a gasp. He what? Mom cried. Stole Mick's camera, Mrs. Owens repeated. Uh, no, Mom said. No, Jack didn't tell us that. She turned and glared at me. Her stare sent a shiver down my back. Jack told Mick it was his camera, Mrs. Owens said, but when Mick looked at the pictures inside it, he realized he kept this camera belonged to him. Your son stole it. Mom was so flashing me an evil eye. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Owens. I don't want to tell our child, Mrs. Owens said, but stealing a camera is serious. Don't you agree? Yes, I do, Mom replied. I don't understand why Jack would do that. Is your son there? I'm going to put Jack on the phone to apologize right now. She waved me over. I had no choice. I took the phone and apologized to Mick for stealing his camera. That total phony kept sniffling, pretending like he was very upset and about to cry. I wanted to punch his fat face. Instead, I said it was all a mistake and it would never happen again. When I got off the phone with Mick, my parents made me call the house. I apologized to them too. I said someone had dared me to do it, and I was stupid to accept it there. I promised them it would never happen again. Then I apologized to Mom and Dad for 20 minutes. By the time I finished, I had done enough apologizing for a lifetime. I was furious, ready to explode when I got up to my room. I was in the worst trouble in my life. My parents thought I was a liar and some kind of psycho thief. And why? All because of Emmy. I slammed the cell phone down on my dresser top. That's all, I said to great teeth. Over. We're done. I brought my face close and shouted onto the phone. 
No more. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you set my hair on fire. I am never, never, never going to help you again. Silence for a long moment. And then her voice rose from the phone softly. We'll see.